Today we're analyzing properties from across the country and it's up to you to decide if they'll make good investments or not. What's up guys, my name is Lily, and welcome back. This channel is where I'm documenting my real estate investing journey and hopefully helping you get started on your own. In the last episode in this series, we looked at duplexes from a couple different states, but today we're gonna look at other types of properties that might also be good for house hacking. Things like single family homes where you can rent room by room or properties with garage or basement apartments. Whether you're looking to absolutely maximize your profits by having roommates or maybe you're purchasing your first home and you just wanna supplement your income, there's a deal out there for you. I'll also show you a few tips on researching properties as well as how to look for red flags. If you enjoy these videos, the best way to support the channel is to subscribe if you haven't already joined the party, like this video, and leave a comment letting me know what you think of these investments. With that said, let's get started. All right, so the first property that we're looking at is a property in Dearborn, Michigan. And I chose Michigan because one of you commented and asked me to do this city. So if there's a place or a property that you want me to analyze, leave that in the comments below and I'll get to you in the next video. So this property is a single family home, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and it's for sale for $107,500. And it does say that this is pending, so it's already under contract. Somebody kind of scooped this up, and it makes sense because let's check out the numbers. So first, just looking at the pictures, this isn't a bad looking house. Um, I'm not sure I love all of this wood paneling, but for the way that the numbers work out, if you're interested in having roommates, you're gonna get the best bang for your buck because renting out room by room is gonna bring in more income than if you were to just rent out an entire property. Something I also think is useful with this property is there's a two car garage. And so if you're handy or you know if you're willing to learn some DIY stuff, it may be possible for you to convert that into a garage apartment and use that as just another room maybe for yourself to live in and rent out the entire house. All right, so we're gonna use this calculator over here, which I built, and you can find the link to this down below. It'll take you to my website. You can download it for free. All I ask is that you subscribe to the channel and let me know if it's useful for you. Also, only change the numbers in gray boxes, as if you change anything else, that's going to mess up the math behind the calculator. Purchase price of $107,500, and let's imagine that we're gonna have a down payment of 3.5%. So if you're investing in a property that you plan to live in, you can use something like a VA loan, which would let you put 0% down. Or if you're not a veteran, you can use an FHA loan, which requires you to put 3.5% down. That will also mean you have to have mortgage insurance, but we'll add that into this in a moment. We'll talk about down payment assistance in a moment, but for this first part, let's just imagine that you're gonna pay this 3.5% down yourself. You're gonna pay this $3,700, and I like to estimate closing costs at 4%. Everything I've read and what I've experienced with my own closing is that closing costs can be anywhere from 0% if you get the seller to pay the closing costs up to 6%. So I think 4% is a safe estimate. And then if the house has any repairs that are gonna need to be done before you're able to move in, that's where you can put here. Gives you your initial investment of $8,000. Interest rates are very low right now and you can probably find less than 4%, but same thing with the closing costs. I like to do my numbers on the high side so that I'm never underestimating what it's gonna cost me to make an investment. If the numbers change, I want them to change where it's an even better investment than I thought it was in the first place. And then I like 30 year mortgages and that tells you the PI in your PITI, right? So that's gonna tell you your debt service, your principal and interest that you'll be paying back to the loan every month. But that's not the final payment because you're still gonna have to pay your taxes and insurance and that's what we calculate down here. So when we go to find our insurance and our taxes, we can scroll down to the estimated monthly cost from Zillow. And first I wanna look at the home insurance because this isn't gonna be exact, but it is Zillow's best estimate of what you might be quoted from different home insurance companies based on your income, based on your credit score, things of that nature. And so they're estimating $38 a month. So I'm gonna put that into home insurance. And before I trust this, estimate on property taxes, I'm actually going to scroll up a little bit and see if there's a public tax history listed for this property. It's not there for every single property on Zillow, but it is there for a lot of them. And you can see exactly what the property taxes were in the past years for this property because Zillow's pulling it from the county website. And so this is $2,010 um, a year, and we're going to put it in monthly here. So you can just go equals 2010 divided by 12. Some good, simple math. And then again, because we put down 3.5%, we're gonna have to pay mortgage insurance. And mortgage insurance comes into play, it's an extra cost to you when you put less than 20% down on a house. I'll make another video on the kind of pros and cons of putting 
more or less than 20% down. But what I say is that don't let mortgage insurance scare you away from buying a house. Don't say, oh my goodness, I don't have 20% to put down and so I have to wait you know, years and years and years to save that up before I can become a homeowner. There are deals out there that will still work even if you have to pay an extra cost every month in the form of mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is typically a percentage of your loan value. And so what you can put in in this category is that percentage. It's usually 1% and you're gonna pay 1% of the loan value over the course of the year. And so this already makes it a monthly payment for you. And you can see that in order to invest in this home, you're gonna need $8,062. And in order to keep up with the monthly payments, that will cost you $790.34, including principal interest, taxes, and all insurance. Now we get to looking at the value this home could bring in for you and determine if it makes a good investment. When you're renting out by the room, it's not as easy to determine the rental value of a particular room in a house, but you can get pretty close. And so what I did here was I just went to Rentometer and basically you can type in any address and get an idea of what the rent is for that property. And you can even look for by room. So what would a studio apartment rent for? A one bedroom house, a two bedroom house, etc. You can see here that there's 13 single bedroom rentals. And again, this isn't like room by room. These are actually one room homes or one room apartments. And so it's not exactly what we're looking for, but it is giving us a good idea. So it says the average one bedroom apartment in this neighborhood is going for $882. You're not going to get that much per room, but I think a safe estimate would be 700, maybe even 650. So let's go with that. Again, this is a three bedroom house. You're gonna live in one room. So you've got two rooms of $650 coming in. And so that's gonna be $1,300 a month. And this is how I like to calculate my expenses. Unless I was living in an apartment where utilities were included in the rent, I know that I'm usually gonna to have to pay my own expenses, especially when I'm, I'm living in a house that I own. I'm also gonna to have to set aside money for vacancy and repairs. That's just part of being a homeowner, as well as lawn care, trash. And if you're gonna use a property manager, someone who's gonna collect rent for you, deal with tenants for you, then that's where you would put that percentage in right here. But for us, I think, especially if you're living in the house, you don't need a property manager to manage your roommates. You can just save yourself some money, keep 0% there. And if you have any other um, expenses, it goes down here. So that's gonna bring our monthly expenses other than our actual mortgage insurance to $450 a month. And down here, you can see our return. We're gonna make almost $60 a month, $715 per year in profit and that's an 8.9% return. What this ROI or return on investment with down payment assistance means is that if you were to get 3.5% down payment assistance, that would mean that you won't have to pay this $3,762. I did an entire video on how to find down payment assistance and whether it might be a good or bad idea for you, but basically that would bring your initial investment down to $4,300 which would in turn, because you put in less money, mean that you're making more of a return. And so it would almost double the return that you're making if you use down payment assistance, you would make 16.6%. And so you would make a 16.6% return on your investment if you use down payment assistance and rent it out this property room by room. So what do you guys think? Is it a good deal? Is it not? Let me know what you think of the Dearborn property in the comments below. Our next property is another single family home in Jacksonville, Florida, but this one is not if you want a roommate situation. Maybe you're just looking for a house for yourself and maybe a spouse or a partner to live in and you want to bring a little bit of extra income in. That's where this type of property I think is super useful. This home is a three bedroom, one bathroom home, but it has a separate garage apartment. So it's for sale for $109,000. I think these pictures look super, super cute. You can also see some pictures of the garage apartment back here. I mean, it looks a little rustic. It may not be your style, but I think you would have no problem looking for a tenant in Jacksonville to rent out this small apartment. It has its own kitchen, has a bathroom, separate interest, obviously. You're good to go. Go back to the calculator and let's first look at you not using down payment assistance. So you're looking at $190,000. That's gonna mean that you're putting down about $14,000 on this home. We're gonna keep our same 4% 30 year loan and let's see what else we can find. So what's interesting to me is that this property sold in 1999 for $61,000 and then in 2006 sold for $25,000, which is a big decrease, but is now for sale for $190,000. So that tells me this property has gone through a lot of renovations, probably in disrepair and new owners maybe fixed it up. 
And so when I see those big swings like that, I definitely want to check and know what was repaired. Was it done up to code with permits? Um, is there anything that you know might still be a little janky that you don't want to deal with? So that's why it's good to look at the, the price history. And then we can also look at the taxes. And so for 2019, the taxes were 1944 a year. And Zillow estimates that home insurance is going to cost us $67,000 a month. And we are putting down less than 20%. So we're, so we're gonna leave our 1% of mortgage insurance or PMI in there as well. To figure out what this garage apartment might rent for, I did the same thing with Rentometer, just put in the address. And this time I looked for apartments that had a studio. And in Jacksonville, a studio is gonna cost you around $900 a month. So for this garage apartment, I'm gonna estimate about $750 a month. I would recommend looking up a local property management company and just asking them, hey, I'm looking to purchase a property in this area. Um, what would you say that an average rental for a garage apartment or a studio apartment might be? Property managers, they are renting out apartments literally every single day. And so they're gonna have some good insight for you. And they just tell you their best opinion um, free of charge. So once we know our income, we put down our expenses. And what you can see is that this return is all out of whack. But basically this negative number here in parentheses, this monthly cash flow is what you'll pay out of pocket to own this property. And as you can see, that is less than your mortgage payment. You're gonna get $750 towards your mortgage paid by your tenant, but you're also gonna set aside money for future issues, for future expenses that you might have so that you don't have to worry, you know, I'm now a homeowner, what's gonna come up when you have a bank account that you're putting money into every single month to take care of those things. So even though you're setting aside $962, it's not like you're losing that money. You're one, paying down your mortgage with the help of your tenant, and you're two, saving up for a rainy day in case you need to fix something around your new house. So what do you think? Would you be willing to pay $962 out of pocket in order to invest in this property? And also remember, when you use an FHA loan, you're committing to live in that property for just a year. Once a year has passed, you're free to move out and maybe even rent out you know, the main house of this property bringing two sources of income and keep it as a rental while you move on to the next one. Let me know what you guys think of these properties and what videos you might like to see in the future. I just want to say thank you. We made it to 1000 subscribers on this channel. I really do appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Come on, hit that button. I post videos most Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye, bye, bye.